Welcome back to Faith Fire Media. I'm Frank Mickens. I am so excited to be with you again. And I will share in just a moment some personal news, some family news that explains part of the reason why I haven't recorded and released the word of the Lord to you in quite a while. It is all the right reasons. I tell you, our family is on cloud nine. We are living in the goodness of God. We are seeing it in the land of the living. But before I go too far, let me just tell you, today we're going to pick up in our three-part series, Why the Pandemic? By the way, the pandemic is not over. The pandemic is not over. We'll talk about Why the Pandemic, part three, after this. I'm back with you here, and uh, I'm ex- so I'm so excited. Faith Fire Worldwide Revival Ministries here with you with our outreach ministry, broadcast ministry, Faith Fire Media, and uh, I'm Frank Mickens, and I would love to dig into the Word of God. Before I do that, I just want to explain. My wife and I and our family are celebrating our fourth child born this month, March of 2022, and he is just a few weeks old. And uh, Ian is his name. We are so ecstatic to have him in our lives. He is adorable. He is delicious. (laughs) We are just eating him alive. And so our our family has been focusing on him, on our our household. And so my priorities have been elsewhere. But it's not because the word has not been speaking. The Lord has not been speaking. It is because I've just had put my energy and attention somewhere else. And uh, now we're back. So Without further ado, we're going to dig into why the pandemic part three, because I could talk about my little one and all of my kids for this entire podcast, but that is not my assignment. My assignment is to talk about why the pandemic part three. Faith Fire Media is a ministry of Faith Fire Worldwide Revival Ministries where we desire to fan the flame of revival around the world. We do that by broadcasting revival. We seek to do that here and in other ways as well. And so if you want to partner with our ministry, learn about our ministry, simply go to Faith Fire Worldwide. Dot com faithfireworldwide.com you can also get faith fire text alerts to be alerted to when we're going on or when we're having activities and ministry assignments that you might be interested in just text the word faith fire to 55498 55498 text faith fire one word to 55498 all right why the pandemic why the pandemic listen that's a good question And in the last couple of episodes, we've been talking about what God is doing in the churches, what God is doing in his believers, and today we're going to talk about what God is doing around the world, what God is doing around the world. So when we talked about what God is doing in the churches, the Lord had shown me churches that he was allowing to die. He was allowing some ministries to die. They were founded on the wrong thing. And then the second episode, we talked about what God is doing in his believers and his Uh, intent out of Daniel 3.27 is to use us in the midst of the fiery furnace as an embodiment of faithfulness to God, walking with God, serving God, bowing in his presence so that the world can see us and acknowledge that he is the Lord. So that's Daniel chapter 3. And look, both of those episodes are available here on YouTube if you're watching us on YouTube or on our podcast. If you are listening on any of our podcast platforms, which we're everywhere, you can go and and watch those or listen to those episodes uh, in your own time. But here we are on part three, and I want to talk about what God is doing around the world. And what I'm going to share with you is an, an event that happened. And I'm going to my notes now because I want to make sure I get this correct. It was on August 9th of 2020. So you might be asking, why are you talking about this now? Well, the Lord had not allowed me to talk about much of this in a broadcast space for quite some time about why the pandemic. He was speaking about it, and I was praying on it. I was praying into it. I was praying for the body of Christ, praying for unbelievers, praying for people's safety, the health of people, but also praying that the pandemic would have the impact the Lord initiated it for, and that is to do a whole lot of different things, one of which is to 
making an impact around the world. This is the first global pandemic for a reason. God is preparing the world for what will become the third great awakening. And I don't have time to get into that, but the third great awakening is coming. And I know there's controversy over whether or not there's already been a third great awakening. Some might say that Azusa Street was the third great awakening. I believe Azusa Street was a revival, but I don't believe it was a great awakening. I believe because the Lord has shown me in my dreams and spoken to me in prayer that there is a third great awakening coming. I don't know the date, don't know the hour, don't know the year that has not been given to me, but I do know he's preparing the earth for this and he is doing so through the salt and the light, the body of Christ. So I'm going to show you what the Lord said to me and showed me on August 9th of 2020. So during that morning, this was a Sunday morning, I was preparing to preach and I was in prayer just in my private prayer and worship time. It was 746 in the morning and I was studying earthquakes and I can't explain to you why, except that the spirit of the Lord had me studying earthquakes. It was not part of my message that I had prepared for that Sunday morning. But listen to what I wrote down at 746 in the morning on August 9th, 2020. I wrote this at any given time, there is an earthquake happening. And that's true. Scientists will tell you there's earthquakes. There are earthquakes happening right now. But we have to be listening for them because they're often too faint to experience. That's what God's doing. A lot of things that we don't see. They're happening right under our feet. They're below the surface. What's happening is at the deeper level. And we need special equipment to pick up the sound and the signal. In the same way, we must be deliberate to hear the heartbeat and the voice of the Lord. This is all in my notes. And I wrote, to go deep with him requires patience, time, and the will to be still and listen. The power that shaped the world is just below the surface, and the power of God is oh so close to us. But to know it and to let others know about it, we have to have the will to be still and listen. The power is earth-shaking, cataclysmic, and formative. It moves nations. It transforms boundaries. Earthquakes are always happening somewhere. There are an estimated 10 million earthquakes, including tremors, each year. 10 million earthquakes happen between the earth's surface to a depth of 500 miles. It's happening at the deepest levels. For each step up in magnitude, the annual number of earthquakes decreases roughly by a factor of 10. For each step up in magnitude, an earthquake releases 30 times more energy. So the difference between a magnitude 1 and a magnitude 2 is the magnitude 2 will be 30 times more powerful. A magnitude 10 quake is equivalent to 62 trillion tons of explosives, meaning there's not that much explosive on the planet for a magnitude 10 quake to be replicated with explosives. And that is one million times stronger than the Hiroshima nuclear bomb. So if we were to have a magnitude 10 earthquake, it would be 10. It would be one million times stronger than the Hiroshima nuclear bomb. Frank, why are you talking about an earthquake? Why are you talking about an earthquake? Because that was at 746 in the morning. I'm talking about something happening at the deepest level. I'm talking about the power that's transformative, the power that shakes the world, the power that's cataclysmic. Certainly that relates to the pandemic, but I had not yet gotten a deeper revelation of what God was saying there. And what happened was between 746 and 807, there was an earthquake. There was an earthquake where I live in the triad of North Carolina. So at 746, I'm writing this stuff down and I have it in my notes. I have a picture of of the time of when I finished my notes in Google Keep. And at 8.07, there was an earthquake. That was the official time. And it was a magnitude 5.1. So we're driving to church where I'm preaching And I'm saying to my wife, we got to figure out what this means, because the Lord had me studying earthquakes. And now there's an earthquake in a a place in the country where we don't get a lot of earthquakes. I mean, we're not we're not in California. So the Lord was confirming, but reaffirming and revealing more about what I had been studying. Okay, so 746 in the morning, I'm studying earthquakes. That's when I finished my notes. That's when I finished typing up what the Lord was having me study. And then 21 minutes later in the spirit, there was a manifestation of an earthquake into the natural at 807. So I'm, I'm asking my wife, what does this mean? What does this mean? And I said, Chas, go to Matthew 27, verse 51. It was a 5.1 magnitude earthquake. And I'm going to read this to you. And this is why we're here today. This is what God is doing 
around the world with this global pandemic. Glory to God. Matthew 27, 51. Go there with me. Listen, this is one of those words you share with somebody because there's been much confusion because the Lord is um, he's not being heard well. And the enemy has perverted the truth about why this pandemic's here. People are thinking it's about personal rights and freedoms and all that. Listen, this is about what the Lord's doing to bring his kingdom into the earth, to reveal his glory in the earth. Matthew 27 and verse 51. Listen to this. It says, then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And watch this. And the earth quaked and the rocks were split. And listen to this, verse 52, and the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised and coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. So this is what the Lord is saying. Listen, you've got to get this word. I need you to hear this word. God is awakening the saints who have fallen asleep. We had gotten so comfortable in church tradition and operating in the commandments of men. We had gotten so comfortable with our pharisaical religion. We had gotten so comfortable in just saying the right things and praying the long prayers. But God said, no, I need you to have power. And in Matthew 27, 51, there was a 5.1 magnitude earthquake. The morning I'm studying earthquakes and in Matthew 27, 51, there is an earthquake. And when that thing quaked, it was when Jesus had bowed his head after saying it is finished. The veil was torn and immediately the bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep. It didn't say they were dead. It said the bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised and they appeared to many. Why? Watch this. We're going to the next verse. It said after they appeared to many in verse 54. So when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, what did they do? They feared greatly saying, truly, this was the son of God. The great awakenings coming. God is instigating through abrasion, through um, stirring through discomfort, through trial, through temptation. And he's making a way of escape into his heart. And his heart is to awaken the body of Christ to appear to many so that unbelievers like a centurion who served the government structure, a perverted system will realize that Jesus is the son of God and they will come to Christ. Listen, I need to mess with your faith right now. Do you believe there's going to be a third great awakening? Do you believe that the spirit of the living God, the same spirit that raised Jesus, raised Jesus from the dead that is in you is available and willing to bring droves and hordes of people to the Lord? Not just to say I'm saved. No, people who will be sold out followers of Jesus Christ. They will have a shift. They will be taken out of one life into the next. They will be taken out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of light. Listen to the spirit of the Lord. Wake up church. This is why there's a pandemic. There's many reasons. Listen, the Lord tells us explicitly that we know in part. We prophesy in part. So I don't know all of it, but I know what the Lord of the living God, the, the spirit of the living God has said to me about the uh, great awakening. That is coming. And I don't know if anyone said this to you, you heard this anywhere else, that there is another great awakening coming. The Lord is producing this thing. And I'll have to share the dream the Lord um, showed me a couple of years ago at some point. I haven't been released to do that, but there is a third great awakening coming. And the saints will be in the harvest field. We will be awakened. Listen, a lot of people like to quote Ezekiel 37, but that is what's happening. The Bible in Ezekiel 37 said to the man of God to prophesy to the dry bones, speak to the dry bones. And there was a shaking. Let's go there now. God, I bless you. I'm going there. I got to extrapolate this word to get this deep into the hearts of your people. Every listener, every person watching, listen, share this 
word. If you need encouragement about why the pandemic is here, this is it. This is not about you. Yes, it is, but then it's not. It's about you being awakened to the purposes of God. There is a reason why the scriptures say in, in the book of Revelation that the end time church are the people who did not love their lives. They loved not their lives. They were so in love with Jesus. They are, will be. This is a future time, but he's building that in the body now. Who do you think that's going to be? Our children, grandchildren? I don't know, but they've got to be trained up in the way that they should go. And so there's got to be an awakening so that we can pass down true faith, the spirit of the God, of the living God, and worshiping him in spirit and in truth. There's a shaking happening. And the Bible records that those things which can be shaken will be shaken until that which cannot be shaken is the only thing that remains and I might have to go there in just a moment but listen to the word of the Lord in Ezekiel 37 here's what the Lord said he said do I start at the very beginning Lord I'll just start at the very beginning in Ezekiel 37 verse 1 familiar passage to many of us but let's listen with new new ears glory to God heart the word heart Starts with the word hear, and in the center of the word heart is the word ear. So the Lord wants you to have a hearing heart and a, an ear to hear in your heart, to hear in your heart what God's saying in his heart. Amen. Ezekiel 37, verse 1 The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out into the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley. A valley is a place where bad things are happening or things are depressed. And it was full of bones. And then he caused me to pass by them all around. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And indeed, they were very dry. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? This is the question for you today. I told you I was messing with your faith. I want to encourage you to believe that every dry place in your life and every dry place in the body of Christ and every dry place in the earth will be filled with the power and the life of the spirit of God that the dry bones can live. The Bible is encouraging us to be those who believe in a great awakening, an awakening in the earth so that we can pray into this thing with anointing, with power, with passion, with conviction and no that what we pray the Lord hears and will grant us what we ask for when we pray in his name. It might not happen when we want. We might be frustrated as we wait, but the Bible says that patience have its perfect work. We need to be complete, wanting nothing as we pray and believe that God is up to something beyond our imagination. He will do exceeding abundantly above anything that we can ask, think, or imagine. Lord, calm me down so I can preach and speak this word. Can these dry bones live? And so the prophet answered, oh, Lord God, you know. He put it in the Lord's hands. Listen, put it in the Lord's hands. Don't try to do this with your own intellect, your own knowledge, and your own comprehension. Our consciousness cannot comprehend what God is up to, not the fullness. Our consciousness cannot comprehend what God's going to reveal, what he's going to manifest. That's why he has to use the body of Christ to do it, because it takes the the concerted power of so many different people to even come close to maybe even touching part of how God is going to move. There's just so much, so much, so much he's doing. So don't stay out of your own head and just believe. In verse four, the Lord said again to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And what happens? Thus says the Lord God to these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. Wake up. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. We're talking about the body of Christ, the body of Christ that has been exposed to the elements because it doesn't have skin. That's been weak because it doesn't have sinew and muscle. The body of Christ that has been disconnected like bones in a in a valley that need to be put together. This has been the state of the church. We're arguing over denominationalism, dispensationalism. We're arguing over the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We're arguing over racism. We're arguing over politics. 
Christ. And the Lord is concerned about the soul of the body of Christ. Listen, Jesus has a soul right now sitting next to the Father. He has a soul. He has emotions. He has a will. He lived a perfect life and he rose from the grave in the same condition as he was before he died, except he has scars on his hands and feet. And he has a soul in heaven and we have a soul here and he wants our soul to match his soul. He wants our thoughts to be his thoughts. He wants our heart to be his heart, our will to be his will, our desire to be his desire. And he's building a church that looks more like that. We'll never be perfect, but he's coming back for a bride that is without spot or wrinkle. And we can't even imagine what that looks like. Even when we look at the book of Acts, and people love to look at the book of Acts and say, that's the, the touchstone, that's the paramount. I believe the church of the end times is going to surpass that, what we saw in the book of Acts. I don't think we can comprehend. I don't even have an opinion. I know we can't comprehend the unity of the body of Christ at the end time church in the end times. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. That's the whole point. It's not about us getting anything done. See, this is where people are missing it. It's not about us getting things done. It's about us knowing God. As we work with him and partner with him and minister to him, the point is him revealing himself to us. It's not about us being right. It's not about us pointing fingers at Democrats. It's not about us pointing fingers at Republicans. Listen, both are wrong because both don't serve Jesus, not in totality. There are agendas that are in political realms that are perverting the political sphere. It doesn't serve God in the way we think it does. Listen, you can have as many GOP people as you want and think that because they're anti-abortion that they are sold out for Christ, but that is not the case because they still have an agenda. What is that? Winning. What is that? Saying what you want to hear. What is that? Serving the people to be reelected. That is not the heart of God. The Bible says that God's heart is impartial. <laughs> He's not a hypocrite. And the politics that we're in right now has convinced people in the body of Christ that GOP is the way. Or Democrats are the way. Either way, we're wrong. We need to know God. We need to know God. Participate in the political sphere if you feel necessary for you to vote. But don't become identified with that. Identify with God. He's coming back to replace all this stuff. He's going to destroy all this stuff and replace it with New Jerusalem. So don't think the stuff that you're so go happy-go-lucky and sold out for is 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 the, the paramount example of God's heart in the earth. It's not. It's just not. And we just need to repent. We got to turn from this stuff because it's causing division. And that's why the dry bones need to be prophesied to. That's why I'm here to prophesy to dry bones. So I prophesied as I was commanded in verse seven. As I prophesied, there was a noise and suddenly a rattling. And the bones came together bone to bone. Listen, a rattling. That's the quake. God is rattling right now. He's calling people like myself to come and speak to you and others to make you uncomfortable with the status quo and seek God and his will. And he's going to bring these bones together and create a unified church. He's going to bring these bones together. And he's going to make a bride without spot or wrinkle. He's going to bring these bones together. He's going to create light and salt in the earth that will be unshakable. Unshakable. I'm going to Hebrews chapter 12. And it says. In verse 25, see that you do not refuse him who speaks, for if they did not escape, who refused him, who spoke on earth. Much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. It's his voice that shakes the earth. It's his will that shakes the earth coming out of his mouth. It's Jesus because he's the word. Jesus is perpetuating the kingdom of God advancement in the earth with the pandemic. His word, God's word, Jesus Christ into the earth is creating a shaking. But now he has promised, saying, yet once more, I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. He's shaking heaven for this. Now this yet once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are made, 
that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. This is what I was just talking about. Politics. He's shaking politics because he wants us to let go of it. What does it say about the things that can be shaken? They are being removed. Well, from where? From our hearts. They're not going to be fully removed until God returns, when Jesus returns. But until then, he's trying to shake the body of Christ into removing their allegiance to anything except him. And in verse 25 or 28, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear for God. Our God is a consuming fire. That's how it ends. Our God is a consuming fire. The shaking's coming with no negotiation. God wants all of you. He doesn't just want the part of you that you want to give him. He wants it all. He wants your politics. He wants your, your vaccine and mask opinion. He wants it all. And he wants you to simply give up and go toward what it cannot be shaken, and that is his kingdom. All of this stuff that can be made, he wants it to be removed from your desires. What does the Bible record? It says, set your mind, set your heart on things above. Set your heart on things above. The things that can be seen are temporal, but that which is not seen is eternal. He wants your mind and heart to be focusing on what is eternal. I'm going to wrap up here, but I encourage you before we pray. Submit your heart to the Lord. Jeremiah 17. Thank you, God. I'm going to read about our heart because, you know, there's going to be a wrestling with this word. There's a wrestling with every prophetic word. There's a wrestling with every truth from God because our hearts are, dis are desperately wicked and don't like to be told what to do outside of what we want to do. And I can smile about it because that's just how we all are. That's our frame. And God knows our frame. Psalm 103. He knows our frame, but he pities us. And so he sends his word again and again and again and again. <laughs> In verse 5 in Jeremiah 17, it says, Thus says the Lord, this is the word of God, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. Anywhere where you've made man your strength, you've departed from God. In verse 6, For he shall be like a shrub in a desert, and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited. That's the church. Dry, dry bones, because we have not put our hearts wholly into the hands of the Lord. Verse 7, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord, for he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. You want fruitfulness? Put it all into the hands of God. That the things that can be shaken be removed from your life. That's the awakening. That's what he's doing across the globe. He's bringing the fallen asleep saints to life. He's allowed already some churches to die. He's put us through the fiery furnace to uh, enliven our worship so that we can stand and be a witness. And he's also saying, I'm going to shake everything around you so that you have nothing to hold on to but me. At least that's his desire. That's your choice. You can decide to hold on to him and his word and your time with him and your experience with him and his presence and being baptized in the spirit and walking in the spirit and being led by the spirit, being a child of God, screaming out, Abba, Father, and being involved in the adoptive process where you are being given a new name, a new identity. Or you can hold on to this world and you will be like the heath. You will be in a dry place, but that's not his desire. He wants you to yield fruit. And in verse nine, the heart is a deceitful is deceitful above all things. Listen, that's literal. That is the word of the Lord. Your heart is deceitful above all things. Your heart is so deceitful, there's nothing more deceitful than your heart. And that's why we can't trust our own heart and lean on our own understanding. And it says, it is desperately wicked. It is conditioned to be wicked. It is it has a proclivity toward wickedness. This is the word of God. I'm not saying this. This is God. And he says, who can know it? The answer is no one except him. Because in verse 10, he says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, 
even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. God is going to test you so that he can show you your own heart and your own mind. And you've got to stay in the scriptures because the scriptures, as we know, the word of God is sharp as a two-edged sword, and it is the discerning power between soul and spirit. You'll be able to see the, the soul that is not agreeing with the spirit, but you've got to seek him. He's going to search your heart, and he's allowing this pandemic to do it all over the world for believers. As a partridge that broods but does not hatch, so is he who gets riches but not by right. It will leave him in the midst of his days, and at his end he will be a fool. We can't put our heart on anything of this world. A glorious high throne from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary. O Lord, the hope of Israel, all who forsake you shall be ashamed. Those who depart from me shall be written in the earth because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. Don't be those who depart from him. You'll be forsaken. And so some of this stuff we've been taught about how all things work together for the good of those. Well, it says to those who love God, who are walking according to his spirit. Walking not after the flesh, but the spirit. We are not always right just because we're saved. God is testing your heart in this hour. He wants to awaken you where you've fallen asleep. He wants you to be salt and light so that unbelievers can see you and say, surely Jesus is the son of God. The reason why we don't have power in the church is because we are operating in man-made stuff. He's shaking it and he's going to replace it. Let us agree with him. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just reaffirm your sovereignty. You are the Lord and there is no other. And as surely as you live, the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. I thank you for the ability to be here and share your word. I pray that as an oracle of God, that I'm being as clear as you need me to be and that the hearts of your people that are hearing and seeing me right now are receiving the truth of your word with a rich depth topsoil of their hearts and even in the depths of their hearts that the roots are growing now and they will remain and that your people will be trees planted by the rivers of water that will bear fruit in their season. Their leaves shall not wither and everything they do shall prosper. Why? Because they're rooted in you. Not in this world, not in politics, not in opinions, not in their Facebook friends opinions, but in the word of God. May we be those who are of knowledge and spare our words that we don't need to get into debates. We don't need to get into arguments that we don't have an opinion because our opinion doesn't matter. Ezekiel said, you know, Lord, when you asked him a question, you know, can these dry bones live? You know, Lord. Lord, may that be our posture. You know. Isaiah prayed that he was a man of unclean lips and dwelled in the midst of a people of unclean lips. May we be as he was posturing ourselves in the presence of God to be, receive a burning coal on our mouths. I pray we'll eat the scroll as Jeremiah did, that it will be sweet in our mouth, but bitter in our soul, that it will cause the discerning power of the word to separate soul and spirit, and that we will taste and see your good, but that we will put ourselves on the altar and allow, allow you to be the consuming fire and burn away all the fat. God, I pray for this revival that only comes by your spirit, not by a bunch of people getting together and singing worship songs and saying that we're right but by surrendering our hearts to God because you're right and we're wrong. It's in the precious name of Jesus I ask, knowing that you hear me and that I'm praying according to your will and you'll give us what we ask for. It might not come what we want, but it's coming. The third great awakening in the name of Jesus. Amen. Listen, I praise God for you. If you want to sow into this ministry, you can do so at faithfireworldwide.com. I won't spend much time on that. God provides and he's speaking to whoever needs to be spoken to to give. I praise God for you. And until next time, may the Lord give you peace. Bye. Thank you.